let's talk about the workplace at, at a senior level that you are in chitra do you, have you faced uh, resentment or the the fact that in a room full of men it's difficult to speak out what are the challenges you face as you went up the leadership ladder when you were talking to an external uh, you know community or an external group of people um, what are the challenges there you know two things which have always been in my favor have been an advantage so perhaps i'm a wrong example hmm. which is that the financial sector has always been very agnostic to gender you know second if you are part of an organization from the beginning you always have a advantage so you don't have the challenge of you know having to be heard and whether you're taken seriously etc because you know you've grown with the organization so in a sense i'm a wrong wrong example because i've never had those challenges i've never you know had difficulty in sort of uh, raising my uh, presence or you know putting in my contribution or being recognized or any of that even in IDBI and so also in NSC hmm. so in a sense is it also that the financial uh, uh, community or the financial banking and finance space has had a clear run of having women at different levels so the men are also used to women taking equal decisions and is is that the learning for other sectors that maybe you need to give time that these things are not done in a hurry it's it's a bit of both it's a bit of both you need the supply side you need more women coming in you need them to be wanting to go across different careers even now you find women predominantly looking at a few career options they don't really look at a manufacturing or you know a shop floor kind of an opportunity those are exceptions so supply side is one second of course you know more people Uh, from experience will learn that it's a very healthy mix to have uh, you know a good amount of women and men in a team because they always bring very different perspectives even in your team uh, for example my regional heads many of them are uh, women there are you know there are very few things i have to worry about in terms of managing with them because you know the sense of responsibility comes very naturally to women so if you give them something you know they will run with it and if there's something they'll come back to you so uh, women bring very different uh, you know talent sets and complement a lot of things what you know the men team members uh, would appreciate and would do well with having that complementary set in the so team so you say that it brings a 360 degree yeah. view on a lot of aspects Let me, as a leader, facing some challenging times, you've gone through some tough turns. Has has your reaction been very different from your predecessors? How you would approach a particular problem? Do women? I mean, do you have something unique because you're a woman, or do you think leaders are very individualistic, anyways? I think you know there are qualities that leaders do well to have, and that is nothing to do with being a woman or a man. as they say you know being patient or i mean listening to everybody this is something that every every leader has to do so uh, it's more to do with your nature than whether you're a man or a woman again no leader will be like another leader right so each one brings his own uh, basket of personality traits and uh, priorities which make his delivery very different from somebody else's the other view is that for a woman to be a leader you have to be extra aggressive because you would have fought your way up i mean that's the the general perception and that you have to be terribly ambitious and that you know that becomes your nature but i haven't really seen that in the women leaders i've interviewed so it's a complete myth according to me uh, what do you think i mean do you think you have to fight harder to prove yourself work harder you know this one thing i've certainly uh, believed in and uh, it is held out in all these years you must be yourself right you should not try to be anyone else and if you are a woman and that brings certain things to the fore so be it right i think this race to be like everyone else and uh, race to prove that you are equal to a male counterpart etc is not necessary and completely uncalled for and talk about ambition as i said each one is driven by something right if you are not driven by uh, something you won't get where where you are today 
what you are driven by can be different, but you have to be inspired to do what you are doing day in and day out. You must want to come, and you must want to achieve something. And that's what I think takes you forward. In the long haul, uh, it can't be just you know some designations and roles. It has to be doing meaningful work. I mean, that brings me to the logical question. You have had pretty big shoes to fill, you know, for, with your predecessors. Has that ever uh, been something that has been in the back of your mind that you have to prove yourself, or do you think this? particular mantra also goes for the way you have handled your role in the last year. Completely. I mean, each one has his own shoes to fill, right? You try to do good work and I think value will follow. And there is a lot of opportunity to do good work, right? More importantly, we have to look at what is in the long term interest, what is going to benefit a larger set of stakeholders. And if that doesn't happen in three months, that's okay, right? Because institutions last for several decades. And if you start processes that build value for that institution in the medium long term, the value will get automatically created. So I think that's all one should be focused on. This is not a, you know, this is not a me too, this is not a race to show something every three months. No. Last set of questions. Do you think people are in a hurry? When you, you, when, when you meet a lot of people, men or women, a hurry to reach the top and are they missing the point then? Actually, whenever I go to schools, this is something that, uh, you know, I consciously sort of put across because yes, I do find that a lot of people who step out of colleges have plans um, in what can you do in three years, what can you do in five years kind of thing. and. Uh, just, just to set them thinking, many times I ask, so after that, what would you do, <laughs> right? Because you've got 30 years ahead of you. So what would you do after five years if you've reached everything that you have to? So uh, my take is that focus on what you can do and others, other things will follow. And focus on what you can do long term so that the short term will follow, right? So yes, it is a mindset and you can't blame anybody because a lot of the noise that you hear around you today is, uh, you know, quarterly results and, you know, uh, prices, the share prices and so on. So you can't blame them because that's the kind of performance metrics that is put before them. Mm. But while you can't ignore this and you don't need to ignore this, if you focus on long term value creation, this should follow. Last question for a woman or a worker who is watching this show. What would your advice be? Look for opportunities around you. Second, be driven by something. Be driven by something that you want to achieve. Then you will identify these opportunities. And thirdly, once you've decided that this is worth striving for in life, then make it work for you. And don't give up your aspirations halfway. Thank you so much, Uta. Thank you. Thank you.